Japanese stock trader Takashi Kotagawa, popularly known as BNF, turned $13,600 into $153 million within eight years. He traded between 2000 and 2008 and mastered the art of making money in both bull and bear markets. He understood the stock market so well that he did not have even a single losing year during that time. In this video, I will talk about Kotagawa's trading strategy and how he analyzed the market. I will also talk about how he removed human emotion from the trading process to make sure that he remained consistently profitable as a trader. In addition, I will talk about what indicators he used, how many stocks he regularly traded, and, most importantly, what kind of stocks he traded to become a cult figure in the world of trading and investment. I started investing with a small amount of capital, and over the last eight years, my portfolio has grown over 500%. If you have not already, take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Take another moment to like this video if you like it after watching it to the end. Let us first see how his money grew over the years when he was active as a trader. That will give you some insight into how powerful an income source trading stocks can be if executed with a perfect strategy. Kotagawa started trading with $13,600 in the year 2000. That is not a lot of capital for a trader by any standard. Even if you want to escape patent day trader regulatory designation or PDT today, you must have at least $25,000 in your trading account. But within two years, Kotagawa turned that small amount into $15 million. In 2005, he bought 7,100 shares of JCOM Holdings and made a staggering $17 million in just one trade. Within three years after that, his total portfolio value increased to an unbelievable $153 million. Let us now look at Kotagawa's trading strategy. I would not say his strategy was highly polished, sophisticated, or complicated. In fact, it was completely the opposite. Many of you who like to use lots of indicators on your chart to make sense of the market may even question whether such a strategy might apply to today's complex market environment. First of all, Kotagawa used a 25-period moving average indicator on his chart to pinpoint the market trend. He applied the indicator to his daily chart. He believed it was the daily chart that he must use to cancel the short-term noises in the market. If you are new to trading and don't know what a moving average is, go to the description of this video and click the relevant link to go to a page of Investopedia that offers a detailed analysis of the moving average indicator and how it works. I applied this 25-period moving average on the daily chart of several stocks by going to tradingview.com forward slash chart. It really gives you a clear view of the market. This is the daily chart of Lending Tree. Here you can see your favorite Tesla. If you're into meme stocks, this moving average can help you become a profitable trader. This is GameStop. If you are an NVIDIA trader, you can definitely use Kotagawa's 25-period moving average to identify the market trend. NVIDIA stock respected the moving average for about three months and made its investors a lot of money. The stock rose from $521 to $972 per share during that time. This is MicroStrategy. Between mid-October and early January 2024, MicroStrategy respected the 25-period moving average religiously and rose from $376 to $774. What about Bitcoin? The answer remains the same. Bitcoin rose from $28,000 to $45,000 by maintaining its momentum above the 25-period moving average. It is obvious Kotagawa traded the chart, not the products or goodwill of the companies whose stocks he was trading. If the chart indicated it was time to enter a trade, he entered a trade. If the chart indicated otherwise, he moved to the next stock, looking for an opportunity. He had no favorite stocks. By focusing on the algorithmic probability of a trade, he removed human emotion from his trading activities. He exited a position when the trend changed. 
He did not wait to lose more money, hoping to earn more later, simply because he knew the opportunity was not there anymore. Secondly, Kotagawa wanted his desired stock to fall by at least 20% from the 25-period moving average. He would enter a long position immediately and make money as the stock recovered about 15%. According to him, stocks must come close to the moving average, even if they must continue declining. As traders, our general tendency is to profit from the market trend. Trade with the market, we say, or the trend is your friend. That is, go long when the market is in a rising mood and go short when the market is falling. Kotagawa seems to disagree with that philosophy. He would go against the market to make money, provided the stock declined at least 20%. Thirdly, Kotagawa liked to trade beaten-down stocks. The stocks must decline gradually, respecting the 25-period moving average. This is Lemonade, L-M-N-D. The stock declined from $70 to $20 per share between November 21st and March 2022. This is lending tree between August and December 2023. The stock declined from $30 to $10 per share before it rose to $30. For long trades, Kotagawa would enter the market right after the price rose above the 25-period moving average, thus beginning a new trend. Here, you can see a power candle that ended the decline to begin a new journey for the stock. Kotagawa would ride the entire rise until the price crossed the 25-period moving average again. Thus, with an investment of $13 per share, Kotagawa would make a profit of $18 per share, which is about 140% before exiting the market. Fourth, some researchers suggested that Kotagawa used RSI, or the Relative Strength Index, to understand if his target stock was in the oversold territory. RSI was developed by J. Wells Wilder. It is a momentum indicator that measures the speed and change of price movements. It oscillates between 0 and 100. Generally, a stock is considered overbought when its RSI value is above 70 and oversold when that value is below 30. Although Kotagawa had a lot of followers and a real desire to educate them in trading, I have not seen any clear indication that he used the RSI value heavily as part of his trading strategy. But I could say with no hesitation that RSI is a humble indicator that makes certain aspects of the market sensible to many traders, and many traders have developed their own style of using the RSI for confirmation. In today's markets, many traders use a strategy called the mean reversion strategy. It suggests that asset prices generally return back to their average levels after an extreme price move or volatility. In Kotagawa's case, those average levels are represented by the moving average. However, it is difficult to know after exactly what percentage of its decline a stock would begin to rise back to its average value levels. Although Kotagawa points at the 20% decline as a rule of thumb, he indicates that the decline can be more or less based on the stock in question, the industry and the sector the stock belongs to, and the overall market sentiment at the time of trading. On a day when the market is in an alpha mood, a declining stock may not decline that much, thus leaving the mean reversion theory inapplicable. If you want to experiment with Kotagawa's mean reversion trading style to perfect your trading strategy, you may use MACD, PPO, RAF regression channel, Bollinger Bands, or any other trend-defining indicator. You can try these indicators by going to tradingview.com. I will put a link in the description below for you. Besides, CMC Markets has posted an excellent article on the mean reversion financial theory on its website. Read it from end to end to make sure you understand it all before starting backtesting. Remember, do not put any money into the market before you have at least a workable strategy in place. You must understand exactly how much money you are ready to lose per trade before making a trading decision. Trading is a job, a profession, like any other. It is not gambling. Never say I have a $1,000 and don't mind losing it all. 
Losing a thousand dollars off a thousand dollar account is losing one hundred percent of your capital. Such a mentality will never help you become a profitable trader. At the same time, never say that I made one hundred dollars and then lost that one hundred dollars, so I did not lose anything. That is not true. Losing one hundred dollars of profit entirely means losing one hundred percent of your income. When you make a profit, it becomes your money, it becomes your capital. It is not your profit anymore. Do not trade without placing a hard stop loss. A stop loss that is not in action during a trade, but only on your mind, is not a stop loss at all. Losing a trade is a part of the trading game. You are not meant to win all the trades. That is because you don't control the market and the world. The market exists within the world, which has many, many stakeholders, some cleverer, cruder, greedier, and more sophisticated than others. What you control and may advance in with your intellect and hard work is the probability of winning. I see every trade as a potential loser until I actually exit the trade with profits. Try to win at least 50% of your trades, but your strategy should target a higher percentage, say 70%. It should make you a profitable trader even if you win only 30% of your trades. Do not try to learn one million strategies because it is useless to do so. If you are new to trading, every strategy may sound highly effective to you. However, you should not settle with a strategy until you have done some experiment with it, risking a small amount of real money and writing down all your entries and exits and stop losses. On this channel, I promote only three trading strategies, the gap and go strategy, the 20-200 strategy, and the high-low candle strategy. I have made a video on the high-low candle strategy that I use as part of my trading activities every day. Watch the video and practice the strategy on TradingView to become a profitable trader. Subscribe to the channel to watch an extensive demonstration of the two other strategies in the coming days. Limitations of Kotagawa's Trading Strategy Number 1. You must understand that an overbought stock can rise much further before starting to decline. In the same way, a falling stock can fall further even after the RSI value is in the oversold territory. Any financial meltdown, flash crash, and geopolitical decision may take stocks far, far away from their mean average price levels. In fact, a stock may never return to its average price levels in many years or ever. There are plenty of traders who trade growth stocks. Some of them become interested in a stock only after its RSI value has risen above 70. A stock may rise and rise, staying above the RSI value of 70 for weeks and months. Similarly, a declining stock with lots of debt may decide to declare bankruptcy to get protection from creditors. Some of them may issue more shares or arrange a reverse split of the shares, thus causing deep financial loss and distress to traders and investors. What this means is that buying or selling stocks based on their oversold and overbought status may not save you from hurting your account seriously. It is only reasonable to think that many traders will start taking profit once a stock reaches its overbought territory, thus creating enormous volatility, at least in the short term, within the overbought territory. A stock that has a solid reason for rising may temporarily fall below the RSI value of 70, but may reclaim the territory shortly thereafter to rise higher. Number 2. Some stocks may fall even by 80% within a trading session. If you enter a position after a stock has fallen by only 20%, you may lose a lot of money and your account may never recover from that loss. If an entire sector declines, all stocks within that sector will fall, more or less. Among those that are already declining may decline even more with the falling sector. When COVID-19 began to intensify across the world, the entire energy sector saw red. Many multi-billion dollar companies lost value even by 90%. Crude prices went into negative temporarily, which had never happened before. The same happened to the airline and cruise industry. Delta Airlines fell from $64 to $17 per share, erasing 75% of its value. Royal Caribbean Cruises fell from $132 to $20. 
Chinese electric vehicle maker, NIO fell from $63 to $5 per share when the U.S. government went into a full-force trade war with China. The message is, you never know when and what may seriously disrupt the market, and you can never take it for granted that those disruptions will end soon and the stocks you are trading will rise again. If you were Takashi Kotagawa and had positions worth $100 million open in the energy sector, you would have been left with only $20 million or less by the end of the trading session. That is why replicating Kotagawa's strategy may be a dumb trading idea in today's market conditions. Number 3. A company's stocks do not rise or fall in value simply because they produce good or bad products. Even if you choose the best company to trade based on the fundamental analysis, you may sometimes have repeated losing trades. Most real estate trusts and utility companies' stocks declined when central banks raised interest rates to battle rising inflations worldwide. Although nothing had changed in terms of their business strategy or the infrastructure they had in place, simply because they had to pay their creditors more interest every month, their quarterly earning reports did not have much to show to their investors. Their stocks fell more after every earnings report for almost two years. The same happened to lending or mortgage companies everywhere. People did not want to buy a property or take a business loan when the interest rate was so high. Similarly, the entire financial sector fell overnight when the Silicon Valley Bank failed in 2023. Nobody could immediately say whether Wells Fargo, Bank of America, or Citi would survive the crash. Silicon Valley Bank was worth about $200 billion. Even such a big bank can fail. Number 4. Kotagawa is known to manage 30 to 70 positions a day. Most traders may manage four to five positions, if not less. Most traders are not Takashi Kotagawa with millions at his disposal from the second year of his trading. They do not have enough money to enter so many positions at the same time. Even if you have a large sum of money in your account, it is wiser to make fewer trades with a higher possibility of winning than more trades with a lower possibility of winning. You cannot be rich by winning more trades, but by winning trades with higher amounts of profits. Number 5. Even though he made millions of dollars by trading, Kotagawa moved his money to more stable assets where the growth is not very high but steady, for example, the real estate sector. He won trade after trade for years, but understood the pressure that a trader goes through during a trading session. Imagine that Kotagawa did not stop trading in 2008 at least publicly, and that he continued trading with the same momentum up to now. Wouldn't he be the richest person in the world? The question is, why did he decide not to continue as a trader? The answer could be multiple, but one of them could definitely be that he was aware of the risk that came with trading stocks. Number 6. Kotagawa is a mysterious character. There is not much evidence-based academic research on his trading style. If his case sounds like a piece of fiction to you, I don't blame you, but he was real. So are you and I, who are battling with the market with our small amount of trading funds to win millions every day and failing every day to do so. We all want to be a Kotagawa, but have to be satisfied with whatever small profit we can make. Before you make your first trade, you already know that the market is a beast and you are no match for it, but you still want to be a trader and make millions. You continuously look for data, strategies, and indicators to create your edge. You follow many successful traders and read their stories, trying to understand their trading strategies. You sit before your trading platform even after losing 20 trades at a stretch and still want to make money trading stocks. You wake up before the pre market begins and go to bed after checking the post market market sentiment. Then you travel back and forth between sleep and wakefulness, thinking how you must recover the losses that have just happened. These all say something about you. Don't underestimate yourself. You may not be Kotagawa one day, but you will overcome the fear of the market. You will be an experienced trader, and you will make money. Improve yourself and prosper as a trader.
We know only how much money Kotagawa made, but we don't know how much money he lost to earn that money. I would not be surprised if someone said he lost $100 million in the process of making $153 million. That is how trading is. You have to find a way to make more money than the money you lose. That will make you profitable. Hang tight until that day when only one trade will bring you your desired breakthrough as a trader. Number 6. Why did Kotagawa manage over 30 positions at the same time? True that he had millions of dollars to manage, but couldn't he take larger positions in fewer stocks than taking smaller positions in many, many stocks? That tells us three things. Number 1. He was not sure about the positions he was taking. Number 2. He wanted to diversify his positions, so at least some of the positions became winners, thus making him a profitable trader despite his lack of knowledge of the market. If he was such a genius, he could take a $100 million position in one stock. He did not do so. Number 3. He was aware of the limitations of his trading strategy. He knew there was no perfect trading strategy, and all strategies were dependent upon many market variables. As a trader, you may not achieve your desired result, even if any of those variables does not cooperate with your strategy fully. Questions for you. Do you think as a trader, Kotagawa had luck on his side? Do you think he could be lucky every year for eight years? And do you think you could make $153 million in today's stock market off $13,000 by being lucky? Leave a comment below and take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Goodbye.